Welcome to a... Hello and welcome to my first Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you the very basics of Blender so you, you will have no trouble following my later tutorials. This is what your startup Blender file should look like. Your splash screen and number may be different if you have an older or newer version. The splash screen consists of an image that was chosen out of some of the finest artwork provided by the community. This particular image is probably one of the finest images ever created with Blender. And if you end up being able to create something like this, I'll happily watch your tutorials. So, this is what to aspire for. To get rid of the splash screen, you just click outside the splash screen and it's gone. To get it back, you can click that Blender logo and it's back. And you can click outside to get rid of it again. Now, you see a cube. This is known as a default cube. Um, it's kind of taboo. You're supposed to delete it first thing, but we'll leave it. You ha also start with a light and a camera. To select these objects, like I'm doing, you want to right mouse button click on the objects. That should have the de desired effect. To get rid of an object, you want to hit X and delete. Select it and then hit X and delete. Select it and hit X and delete. Now we have an empty scene. To add a new object, you hit Shift A or go to the Add menu. We want to add a mesh and we'll add a new cube. This looks identical to the default cube and is identical. To move around your cube, take the middle mouse button, hold it down, and move your cursor around. This will move you around the scene. To zoom in and out, scroll the middle mouse button forwards to go in and backwards to go out. To pan, hold shift, press down the middle mouse button, and move your cursor. To go into different viewports, you can hit the 1 key to go into front view, the 3 key to go into side view, the 7 key to go into top view. You can hit 5 to toggle orthographic. Orthographic removes all perspective. I'm assuming you know what perspective is. Again, 3 to the side view, you hit the 5 key to toggle orthographic. 1 for the front view, you hit the 5 key to toggle orth orthographic. Excuse me. Now, that is the, the very basics. Next, we want to introduce the concept of meshes. To work with a mesh, you go into edit mode. You see some changes. First, the entire cube is now orange, and there are these little points. You can select these points just like you would select objects. Right mouse button click. To select multiple, you hold down the shift key and right mouse button click. To move them, you can simply grab the white circle, or to move them along a, along a Pacific a axis, you can hold down the arrow and move it back and forth. Hit Control Z to undo an action. Also, if you are using a keyboard shortcut action such as the G key, which grabs or moves the object, to cancel it when you have it here, if you right mouse button click, it will snap back to where it began. Blender is an extremely powerful program due to its efficient keyboard shortcut system. It's a good idea to learn your keyboard shortcuts. But until you've got your brain around them, if you hit the space bar, you can search for different functions such as move, um, or maybe it's grab. I don't use this. Um, well, there are a lot of options like maybe add Q. See? You can add meshes in edit mode. So when you exit edit mode, you'll have two meshes as one object. Excuse me, I forgot to explain axis. Let me do that now. An axis is basically a direction in 3D space. This green axis is, the is known as the Y axis and moves forward and backwards. The red axis, known as the X axis, 
moves left to right. The Z axis, which is the blue axis, represented only by this arrow right now, um, is the up and down. Any position can be stored using just these three axes. There's Blender also supports rotation. To rotate an object, you simply hit the R key. It will rotate using your viewport as an axis to rotate around. To rotate around one of the three major axes, hit R, Y to rotate around the Y axis, the green axis, R, X to rotate around the red axis, or the X axis, and R, Z to rotate around the blue, or the Z axis. To rotate freeform, hit RR. This will open up trackball rotate. This will allow you to rotate basically just by moving your cursor. It's kind of an odd way to rotate, and I do not prefer it. In our scene, we currently do not have a camera and a light anymore, so I cannot explain rendering. Let's add one. So if you remember now, we can use the Add menu or use the keyboard shortcut Shift A. There are a lot of options here. A lot of these are advanced. But here we can add a camera. The camera defaults. It's inside our cube right now by pointing down. We can move it up by grabbing the blue arrow. Actually, it's rotated. And move it until it looks like it's pointing in roughly the right direction. We can also rotate it carefully. To look through the camera, you can hit the number, cat, the number pad key 0. If you have a laptop and do not have a number pad, you can go to the view option and select camera like so. To move your camera from inside the camera view, you hit Shift F and then sc scroll back and forth to move your camera in, kind of like you'd use a gas pedal, I guess, and then move your mouse around to rotate it. When you're happy with the position you've achieved, use left mouse button to select. To render, you hit F12. As you may have noticed, we see two black objects against the gray background. Hit Escape to return to the 3D viewport. To change the background color, go to the world setting. Click on this gray color. You can move this to change the brightness and this to change the color. I'm going to go for a green background. Now if we hit F12, the background is green, but our cubes are still black. That is because they are not illuminated. This scene has no light and is absolutely dark. To add a light, we use our Shift A keyboard shortcut again. There are different types. We shall use a point for now. Select point. Our point is hidden inside the cube. Move it up along the Z axis. Move it a little bit along the Y and the X axis. Now, if we hit F12, we will see our cubes nicely illuminated. Except for this side. But that doesn't matter. To change the color of our cubes, we will need to add a material. To add a material, go to the material panel over here. Click the plus new. This will add a new material. To change the color, go to the diffuse option. Click here. Again, this controls the brightness and this controls the color. Let's make our cubes be orange. Now if we hit F12, we have orange cubes. You also may have noted remember to hit escape to return to the 3D viewport, that the cubes are in the 3D viewport. This is very useful. The last thing you may want to know is how to save this render result to your hard drive. To do so, you go to the image option, save image as, select a location, um, anywhere, just dump it somewhere. One of the, if you manage to achieve a great filing system, then I envy you. Give it a name such as cubes, just by clicking here and typing in the text box, and then hit save as image. Now it's saved to your hard drive. To save a Blender file, go to the file option, save as, and then choose the location. I'm going to not save this, so I'm going to hit. Thank you for watching. Bye.